talk us through the data, the factual data. Absolutely. So if we look at, um, for instance, in the UK, we've had uh, over 11 million uh, AstraZeneca jabs already administered. Uh, so it's a fertile ground for evidence base around uh, picking up on these anomalies. And we have in the UK uh, the MHRA and the yellow card system uh, to pick up on this. So that's via pharmacists, doctors, and patients themselves who can report uh, any uh, problems that they may encounter. Uh, and then across the uh, UK and Europe in total, we've had 17 uh, million uh, jabs administered, only about 37 cases that are currently being investigated. Uh, however, in Germany, for a very uh, rare form of blood clotting related uh, to, to cerebral or in the brain, uh, there has been a higher incidence that we would have seen uh, in the regular population. Population. But this is also very difficult to unpick because we see that uh, COVID itself, being exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, also has a role to play in clotting, uh, in, in enhancing cardiovascular diseases. So f from this instance, it's, it's almost, uh, again, the UK is not finding uh, any higher rates than normal uh, within the general population on blood clots. In fact, it's the unvaccinated population uh, that are going to be at greater risk for this. So uh, this has really uh, been a puzzle for many, um, not only epidemiologists, but scientists, public health uh, experts across the world, because we know the risks posed by COVID. 2.7 million deaths globally, 300 million vaccines of all sorts uh, administered so far, and uh, zero deaths that are directly and causally linked to the vaccine uh, on a in a definitive way. And also, uh, it's interesting that some of the data around Pfizer uh, and uh, the issues around adverse events don't seem to be picked up in the same way. So what you're saying is what I hear from a lot of virologists saying the fact that it's actually more worrisome to get COVID than to worry about a blood clot getting the vaccine. But here we are in Europe, a slew of controversy since the very beginning with the AstraZeneca Oxford inoculation. How do we restore confidence in Europe? Europe? Yes, and it's, again, incredibly important to emphasize that the risk associated with COVID, uh, unknown risk, is much higher, not only from uh, hospitalization and death, but if we're thinking long COVID, you know, the, 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 that we're still understanding, that is still playing out. We're only one year into this to see what uh, the disability burden will be versus um, you know, a patch of anomalies around a blood clotting. Uh, the WHO, the EMA, uh, at least to this extent, we'll hear more about it tomorrow, uh, and the MHRA have all uh, pulled together their uh, regulatory expertise uh, to uh, really scrutinize this data even further. And in some uh, counterintuitive way, we can see that uh, these regulatory bodies in, in Germany and in other countries are, are scrutinizing the data. So they are doing their job, uh, but to an extent that n hasn't balanced out the risk uh, in, a, in a more holistic way uh, when we're in the middle of a pandemic. And especially as we've heard from the WHO over and over, the more that we allow uh, community transmission to carry on when we suspend vaccinations, other countries aren't even don't even have vaccines in their hands, and that, that's an, another issue to hold on to. Uh, that this mm. promotes the growth of variants in these areas, so we sure. have to be extremely cautious around uh, any type of suspensions going forward. And I and I fear the damage has really been done here.